In this session, we're going to give you a general overview as it pertains to the navigation of the Build and Edit tool. On the left hand side, you'll see this is called the question tree. Uh, this is where you'll be able to make any uh, modifications or open cards in which you can make modifications in general. So I'll just start at the very top, survey settings. We have a number of options when you uh, click on that option to expand. Manage survey. This is just primarily used mostly for uh, being able to update your survey name so you can go in there and it's actually the very top item on the list uh, the majority of these other items I won't cover in this particular session but we may refer back to it in different sessions as well theme card is where you can customize the theme to your survey you have a number of built-in options uh, that you can activate or you can go in and modify them as you see fit and save them to either the survey or to the overall company level File upload is where you have the ability to click on the add file at the top right and then you can upload files, usually images uh, and things of that nature to be used somewhere else within the survey. Localization is where you'll be able to control some of the uh, pieces as it pertains to multilingual projects. So you can here you can add languages which will also create links and uh, the ability to download and export a, a translation file which you can then use for import. We'll go over that again in depth in a separate section. Default text. This houses all of the default error messaging for the entire survey, which you do have the ability to come in and update as you see fit. Sample sources and end pages is where you would go in and be able to add any recruitment methods as you see fit and then customize them in their end pages. Quotas gives you the ability to review any of the quotas that you've built into your survey in one fell swoop. Termination codes, this is rarely ever used, but uh, this is just a list of all of the termination codes uh, used in your particular survey. Lookups is a section in which you can actually import a, an Excel file, in essence, which you can utilize within your program to uh, either set variables or store data and things of that nature. Most common way to refer to this is doing CMix's version of a VLOOKUP in, in Excel. So I'll just close that section. I'll expand the variables. Variables have a couple of different parts. Uh, system variables uh, refer to the variables that are created uh, by default for every single survey. So these particular items are here for every single survey. You do not have the ability to modify them other than once you update your localization card or the sample sources card that will add additional punches within these two variables by default you will always have them you just might have some different options depending on how you customize things custom variables you have the ability here to add custom variables which are not seen directly by respondent unless you physically want to for example pipe in the the answer to a respondent uh, or if you're using them for any other specific concepts. This is one thing we'll definitely go into in the following session, but uh, here you'll be able to add concept assignments. This is basically the overview here is being able to create any sort of concept evaluation, meaning that you can come here and do an assignment of X of Y items. So for example, you have five cells and you want to assign somebody to every respondent to one of the five cells by either least fill or randomly or what have you. This is where that sort of assignment type of transaction would happen. Then at the bottom, I'm going to skip the questionnaire filter for a second, but towards the bottom here, this is where you would be able to add your pages, quota checks, logic pages. You can see so quota checks are uh, pages are these orange cards that are up here, here on the left hand side. They are indicated with a little bit of a icon here. So if, if I even hover over it, it'll say quota check. We do that just in case anybody's actually colorblind. We had a few people internally that were, but that's the reason why we have these little icons here, just in case you can't see that this is orange. And then the next page down is a logic page, which is purple. Again, hover over the little icon on the left hand side. You can see that that's logic. And these are all, these other pages are the equivalent of a screen to a respondent. So page one is one question by itself on this page alone. So this means that a respondent would see this particular question, which is uh, what is your gender on a page by itself or a screen by itself. So each page corresponds to a screen to a respondent. 
So they'll see one question here and hit the next page button to continue. They don't physically see the quota checks or the purple logic pages, but they would physically touch them as they go through the survey itself. And then if I scroll back up to the top for the questionnaire filter, this is a handy little filter that will allow you to search for any question. So let's say, as an example, I have here, as you can see, a bunch of questions and a very basic rudimentary survey built in here. If I wanted to search for uh, Q2, just typing that in the field up there, that will bring up anything, any page that has a Q2 associated with it. So this will help me, especially in the edits process. So let's say, for example, client or colleague come back and they say, you need to update the question text here, or maybe this, you didn't turn on the randomization, or can you verify that the randomization is working here? You can use the questionnaire filter to search for, again, this case, Q2, and go in and make your updates as you see fit. So just a quick way to, to navigate through the, the question tree to quickly get to maybe a specific area in which you're trying to, to access. Now, if I get rid of that filter, uh, everything will come back here. So I just clicked on the X that appeared there. Um, the very, very bottom, uh, you have four buttons. These will be your best friends uh, throughout the entire process of your survey authoring slash survey building process. The first button on the left-hand side is the ability to, I'll just cl click on this quickly, uh, to add any sort of logic. Uh, so terminations, adding logic blocks, that you, and you can see that there's some examples here of uh, what you can do with them. Also the ability to add termination points, skip logic, set variables, and, and a number of other particular features. Uh, you can add quota check page. You can also add a custom JavaScript page as well here too. So if you're trying to use JavaScript for any sort of logical operation, you can do that as well. So I'll cancel that one. Next one over is to add a section. So by default, you'll see that there's one section up here. That is actually the default when you create a survey from scratch, is to have one section and a page on it on its own. But if I want to add an additional section, I can click on the second button, and you can see another section is down here towards the bottom. So the couple of use cases for this is, one, just for your own purposes, or, uh, a sort of summary or a breakdown of your your survey in general. So let's say maybe I want to go up here to the section one. Maybe this whole battery of questions is tied to my screener. I can go in here and say in this uh, section label field, I can click on that and add the word screener as an example. If I click away, you'll see that that word screener now appears here on the question tree. So now I know that that's my full screener. So maybe I don't want to see this particular section because I'm done with it as an example. I can just truncate it. And then maybe my next section here, I'll click on the section header of section two. And if I wanted to label this as, again, as I see fit, uh, maybe you want Q1 through Q20, you can do that. So it's really for organizational purposes, at least the section label too, and to truncate items in chunks. The sections are also used when we're discussing concept loops. Uh, but we'll, that's going to be another another full session uh, in the future as well, too. So if I get out of here, so the next button over on the bottom is the third one over, uh, adding a page. So if I click on that button, this will allow me to add a page, meaning a screen to a respondent. And I can select this drop down to position it wherever I want. So for example, if I needed this to go after Q1 for any sort of reason, I can just say before or after that particular one and, and add it in between other questions that have already been built. Don't need to use this. By default, the dropdown will say end of section, new page. So if I just leave it alone, this means it's just going to tack it onto the bottom. You're just going to keep adding items to the bottom of the, the question tree. So if I need a page for any reason, I can do that. And then want to show you the last one, which is probably the most important one, is the add question icon. So the fourth one over on the bottom of the question tree. This will allow you to add a question on a page by default, meaning I don't have to add the page like I did before. That uh, third button over, don't need to do that if I don't want to. I can just add a question and by default it will add it on a page of its own as I'm building it. So most likely your workflow is going to be adding or clicking this fourth button over 
uh, throughout your survey building process so that you have one question on a page of its own, you build it, you're done customizing it, then you click on that button again and you do the same process for whatever the next question is. And you can continue all the way through. That's not to say that you can't add multiple questions to a page. You can see that there is an add new question button on this blank page in this example. I can click on that button and I'll see, see that same new question menu so I can build a question right here and continue to add new question to this page too. So for example, if I wanted to have multiple questions on a page, I can continue to do that. But again, that means this screen to a respondent would have however many questions I have built on this page shown to them and they would have to answer all the questions on that page and then hit the next page button to continue. So a use case for that would be something like adding uh, gender and age maybe, because there could be smaller questions, both maybe drop downs as an example, or maybe one's a drop down, one's a numeric input. You can do that so that the respondent sees those two questions and it minimizes the number of clicks to submit the next page. Now one, I'm clicking on any of these items on the question tree. You can see that what will happen is, so I'll just click on Q1 for, as an example. Uh, this will open up a window in the, the main screen here. This is also called a stage. This is a, the question card. Uh, we refer to these as cards. So here is where you do all your modifications to this particular question. And if I click on the page, this is the, the page card where you'll be able to modify that and so forth. So these are the, this is where you're going to do all the modifications to the specific questions that you're, you're building. Questions, variables, survey settings, any of those cards that you open up, that's where you'll be doing the customizing of, of each individual one. You do also have kind of a hidden gem on the top right hand side. There's a layout options view. If I expand this button, you'll see that you have three different views and a close option. What this will do is allow you to navigate your stage or the main window here in a few different methods. My preferred method is single card. Uh, once you select whatever it is that you want to have as your default, you'll pick one. I have single card selected. That means that if I click on one of these questions, maybe I'm done modifying it. I click on another question because maybe I need to modify it it will close now Q1, which was what I originally had open, and then open up Q2. This helps so that you don't have to see multiple things at once and possibly get confused as to which card you're working with. So this will allow you to know, and you can see that this is highlighted too, so you know that Q2 is the one that's opened. So if I, again, go back to another card, whether that's logic or quotas or anything, that those particular items, once I click on it, it gets highlighted and that particular item gets opened up and takes the full view of the, the main window or the main screen or the, the stage here. The other options here are when you first log into CMX and use the authoring tool, the default is one column, meaning that I'll have one card open right now, but if I click on another one, they'll get stacked over on top of each other. And you can see that they're both highlighted. So you have two cards open now at the same time. Now I have three. So I have three different cards open right now at the same time. If I'd like to, uh, I can utilize this to in my advantage for the purposes of being able to look at this question and maybe looking at Q1 at the same time. So that's one of the use cases for that. I may also want to go over and switch this to two columns. What this will do is allow you to have you can see a side-by-side -side view and you can drag these around as you see fit. The items show up side-by-side -side if you'd like. So if I wanted to look at this particular card at the same time as working on this card for whatever the, the reason, I, I have that capability and that functionality available to me. So if I need to know the punches at Q3 while I'm working on Q2, sometimes it's good for logical operations. So if you're setting questions or setting variables and you want to look at the punch numbers uh, so you don't have to remember it or memorize it, you'll be able to utilize this to your, to your advantage. But again, same idea. Because you can have multiple items open at once, they're all highlighted here at the same time. I still have the ability to close them. So I only have these two open right now. But I can... Also go to my layout options and hit close all, and that'll close everything. Now the system will save 
whatever the last view is that you selected. So let's say I come in, again, by default, first time I, I log into the system, uh, I am by default on one column. If I need to change that, I can click up here. Maybe I want to go to single card and have that be my default going forward. The system will remember that setting, meaning that if I log out for the day or for a few hours, that setting will still be here and will persist. So it will remain as such until I change it again, whether that's today, tomorrow, a week from now, two years from now. But I can change this at any point. But whatever the last option is that you selected, that will be what it'll be set to going forward. You also have the ability up here on the top left, right next to the question tree, the ability to collapse this window too. So if you wanted to use that uh, two columns layout, you can do that. And then this will allow you to truncate it so you can maximize the number of cards you have on the screen uh, and or the width, depending on your screen resolution. So it'll just make the, the two cards wider if necessary, but you can expand and collapse that as you see fit. We'll talk about the, the header up here for a sec. If you click on this CMix logo, this will take you back to the survey launch pad, uh, meaning the project list. So this is a hyperlink back to the project list. You'll see your survey name up here. You'll see your current survey status. And you'll see the words build and edit because this is the location we're on in currently. You'll see that there's a downward facing arrow. In a number of the different areas of the system, you'll see that there is a downward facing arrow. And if you hover over it, it'll say menu. So if I click on it, it'll give you a menu or a shortcut menu to be able to get back to any certain location within this project. So if you need to go to the manage and monitor screen, you can come here and click on that and it'll take you there. Also on the top right now, you'll see there's a task icon. Uh, so if you have any tasks here or you want to access the task uh, feature, you can just click on this at any time and this will open up the tasks. We'll talk about this in a future, uh, a little bit more in depth in a future session as well. The little question mark is a link to the knowledge base. We learned about this in the intro and basic navigation of the system overall, but you can click on this question mark to access our knowledge base. Any articles that are tied to the system, you can just search for keywords or phrases and you'll be able to find them uh, rather quickly. You can click on the, the link and it'll open up the, the full article here on the side. If it's, this is still too small, you can click on the title of the article and it'll open up in a brand new window for you. And if you want to close it, there's a little X at the top right. Or uh, if you still can't find what you're looking for, you still have some outstanding questions, you can click on the ask feature and then you can select the particular solution and or product that, that you're asking about, hit next. And then you can pretty much works like a, an email system, uh, which sends a ticket to our customer success team. So you can enter in a subject line and uh, whatever the body is of your, your question and then hit send a message. If you want to get out of this window, you can either A, click away from the icon itself from that widget, or if you wanted to, you can also just click on the question mark again, and that'll close it. In the very top right, you'll see your initials here. Uh, you can click on that, and if, depending on your account settings and what your permission level is, you'll be able to have some further options. So manage users, manage groups, manage library, manage clients. So again, depending on your overall role and permission level, you'll be able to see or not see some of these options. And then here's the my account in the logout feature as well. This has been a general navigation overview of the building ed tool.